So let us learn about the concept of multi-threading. Multi-threading is one of the important concepts. But what is this multi-threading? Are you aware about the sequential programming? Till now, whatever we have learned or whatever we were doing, we were doing a certain sort of sequential programming where it says that every sequential programming has certain beginning, a sequence and a end. For an example, if you wanted to display a list of names, how would you do that? That is, it starts from some point, that is from some index and then travels one element after the other, that is one element at a time, then print and a sequence and then end at a particular time. If you consider in a case of a loop, there is always a condition and then once it does not meet the condition, it ends at a particular time. That is your sequential programming. Similar to this, there is a concept called of thread, where thread also has certain beginning, a sequence and an end. And what a thread does is that it allows you to run within a program. That is, a thread itself does not run. A thread is considered to be a number of threads within one process. That is, within one program, you can run number of threads together. Or you can also define a thread is nothing but a path that is followed while executing a program. Till now we have been run too many or all of the Java programs. But what a Java program does? Do you have any thread in Java program? Yes, the main thread of Java is itself a thread. So whenever you run your Java program, the main thread will run and this is run by the JVM. Similarly, if you want to achieve the concept of threading for your class, you need to use either you need to implement the runnable interface or you need to extend the object class that is thread class and this is available in the java.lang.thread class and what it says what is the life cycle of this threading but why do you need threading by now you know what is a thread a thread is nothing but a path which is followed to execute a program that is a program may have number of threads what do you mean by that Till now we have been running a program which perform a single task. But what if you want your program to perform multiple tasks at a time? What do you do that? So to perform the multitasking, multitasking is either possible through multiprocessing or multithreading. So multithreading is mainly recommended over multiprocessing because in case of multiprocessing, you run one process after the other and where processes, if you are running number of processes together, they do not share the common memory. You allocate separate memory for each of the process. It means the space management is wasted. So you need to understand how you use it. You need to save your space. And if the process wants to communicate between each other or pass any information or data, it is expensive. That is the reason we use the concept of multi-threading, where you run multiple threads under a single process and all these multiple threads share a common memory. And if they have to switch or if there is any kind of context switching between these threads, it becomes easy and less expensive. That's the reason we use the concept of multi-threading. But what is the life cycle of multi-threading? It says that whenever you create a thread, like for an example, in real life, whenever a baby is born, that is nothing but a baby has taken a birth. Similarly, a thread is born. You have created a thread. But what will a thread do? That you need to decide. So whenever the thread starts performing its task, it falls under your runnable interface. That is, it has started running. So you call the start method. Now when you call the start method, start method is to start the engine. That is, start the engine of your car. But in order to move the car, you need to accelerate. Similarly, once you start the thread, it means the thread is ready to run, but you need to call the run method to perform the task. And now when you are performing the task, a thread may have to wait for a certain period of time for certain reasons. It may either be waiting for another thread, that is, if a thread wants to run on a particular resource, but this resource has been occupied by any other thread, then you may have to wait or the thread may go on a sleep state. What is the sleep? That is either you are blocked for some IO operation or you are blocked for join condition. This join condition or join method is nothing but where it says please allow the other threads to run 
after my work is completed for an example you have a method join and then in the bracket you provide milliseconds and when you provide over a thread it means that if you write thread one dot join four thousand milliseconds it meant that it will allow the task to be performed by thread one for that thousand millisecond which is equal to one second and then the later the rest of the threads will start running and finally once the process is completed it will come to the death state that is the thread is terminated right so what is this thread you have understood why you use a thread what is the life cycle of a thread but what happened which thread has to run see now you have created a program the program may consist of number of threads for an example your program consists of three threads now which thread is to run first how will the computer know how will the jvm know in order to make the computer understand which thread is to be picked first over the other there is a concept of priority normally whether you set a priority or not a thread comes with a normal priority the priority lies from 1 to 10 scale and when you create a thread every thread by default is set to a priority of 5 and if you want to set the priority to minimum or maximum you use the concept of min property and max property these two constants are used if you want to set a particular thread to with minimum priority or maximum priority and if you want to set with any other priority like 3 4 6 7 and all then you can use the methods as set priority and if you want to know what priority has been set for the method you can use the methods called get priority so let us see certain methods which is say start run set name get name as we already said to start a thread you use a start method and whenever you start the thread there should be a task to be performed and this task could be performed with a run method and then if you want you can set the name for the thread or if you want to understand what is the name of a thread you can use get name set priority get priority then you have join conditions interrupt whether is alive so this join conditions this says nothing but if my thread is running let my thread run for a particular period of time then let all the threads run concurrently as you have seen here it says start run set name set priority nothing but get name get priority and then you have join condition demon condition interrupt or whether you want to know if the thread is still alive or not there are certain other threads which are on static what do you mean by that you have wheel sleep full stop current thread and dump stack what it means it means say that if your current is sleeping for a period of time how much seconds you want your thread to sleep that is for an example you have created two threads and you say that i want to make my th first thread sleep for 10,000 milliseconds 10,000 milliseconds is like your 100 seconds right so 1000 milliseconds is your one second if you are making your this thread to sleep for 10 seconds then this thread will not perform the task for first 10 seconds the second thread will keep running for the first 10 seconds and once this 10 seconds period ends then the thread one will start executing or if you want to yield its property or if you want to sleep it for a particular period of time or if you want to lock a particular thread or an object or a resource to perform the action and then release or if you want to find out about your current thread or what is there in the stack so all these methods allows you to run on a thread what it understand is like if you want to achieve the concept of concurrency that is performing number of tasks together which thread is to run first and which is to be thread next what resources will be allocated by which threads and then we have created an example of threads and then implementing runnable interface that is I have created a class now which is nothing but a thread class where I am trying to create number of threads and to create number of threads it is either possible by extending a thread class or by implementing a runnable interface and if you are implementing a runnable interface then you need to pass that class object within the thread class. So let us execute this program in practical to understand what are the different ways of creating a thread, implementing runnable interface and then using all these methods over the thread to understand which thread runs over the other. In this example program we shall see how can you create a thread class and by using a thread class or runnable interface. 
So we have created a class called thread exam which extends thread. So here the first example, first you need to specify the access modifier, then the class keyword, then the class name followed with the extends thread class because we are trying to run the properties or the method of a thread class. Therefore, you need to extend the thread class. And how do you start a thread? What is the life cycle of a thread? The thread life cycle says that you need to first create a thread. And once the thread is born, you need to start that particular thread. How do you do that? So in the main method, that is public static void main string args, we will first instantiate our thread class. And our thread class name is thread exam. This is the normal instantiation of the thread class. So you write thread exam, then the object name equals to new followed with the constructor name. And how do you call a normal method? You would call with the object name dot the method name and the method name is run. If you write here as run, it means you are just calling a simple method. Run is a simple method and it is not or nothing related to your thread class. So to start a thread, you need to call the start method of a thread class. And to call a start method, you need to extend your class with thread class or implement your class with runnable interface. And if you do not extend the class with thread class or runnable interface, it means this particular method will enact as a normal method and this will throw an error that please specify or create a start method. So let us just remove this extends thread and now as you can see it throws you an error. It says that this method is undefined. It means you have not defined this method and this method will enact as a normal method. To make this method as a start method of a thread class, you need to extend your class with thread class, right? So you need to extend your class as thread class. So let us execute this program and see the output. So here in the console, you see it says that the thread is running. So what happens here is that whenever you create your class and extend with any of the thread class and once you call the method of the thread class with the object reference it will call by default the run method that is how do you start a thread thread is nothing but in a process you may have number of threads so which thread would you want to run you have to decide you can again say or create number of threads under it you may say that this thread exam class has another thread to equals to new thread exam that is you can create as much of as thread references that you would want to create and then you say that this thread to should also call the start method and this start method will say okay fine first call the thread one and then call the thread two and this thread two will again go and call run method. So we execute the program and now you see it has executed twice that thread is running okay. So first thread one runs and then the thread two runs. So let us make this as comments and now see if you are trying to call class or if you are trying to implement the runnable interface and then run a thread, how do you do that? So we have already created the class. It says that how can you implement the same program using runnable interface. Similarly, you write public class thread exam implements runnable. To use the interface, we use the keyword called implements and where interface is nothing but which consists of your abstract methods, right? So how do you start a thread? In case of when you are using or extending with a thread class, you do not have to explicitly mention a thread object. but if you are using a runnable interface, then you need to call the thread object. What do you mean by that? If you are not extending the thread class, your class object would not be treated as thread object. You need to explicitly create the thread class object that we have done here. So what we have done, we have created here one thread class object and the thread class object is used with the keyword thread. So you write thread, you give the object reference name 
equals to new thread and in this you will pass the object reference of your class right that is nothing but your you have created thread exam this is your class thread one is the object reference and this object reference will be passed as a parameter to the thread class object right and now you have to find out what is the name of a thread or if you want to set name for that particular thread or if you want to find out the priority or get priority set priority are certain methods or the classes that you can apply so what is that now you have created one thread that is t1 right in earlier case where you were extending the thread class you did not have to explicitly create a thread object you were directly instantiating the class and calling the start method over that particular class but in case if you are implementing the runnable interface first you need to instantiate your class then create a thread class object and in the parameter of thread class object you provide your class instantiation that is class reference and with this now you say please get the name of this thread i want to know what is the name of thread so what is the method you write t1 dot get name and because you want to print you have written system dot out dot print ln but now if you want to set the name first you try getting the name or what is the default name of this thread but now you want to set the name of a thread as monica so you write t1 dot set name and in the brackets you will provide the value now again i want to check if the t1 that is if the thread one name has been set as monica or not so please get the name of t1 and print the value now what is the set priority it is normally every thread has a priority right and 5 is a default priority now if you want to know whether a thread has a more priority or less priority in comparison to other thread or not we use to get priority that is t1 dot get priority but if you want to set priority then how do you do that you write the thread name dot set priority is the method and then in the bracket you write from the thread class please apply the minimum priority to this particular thread whatever is the minimum priority if it is zero please set it zero and if you want to set the max priority nine or ten then you can write thread dot max priority and finally you are getting the priority so this is how you can set or get name for your threads set or get the priority for your thread and finally we write t1 dot start that is please start our thread please start this process so once you write this t1 dot start it will look for the run method that it will say now the system that thread is running and after that it will start executing each of these steps so let us execute this program and now you see it says that thread is zero that is your first method that you tried calling is that t1 dot get name and it is thread and then zero next you have set it as monica and then get the name it is now monica what is the minimum priority that is one therefore it has displayed one now the priority of your thread is one and then finally you have run t1 dot start that is please go and execute the run method why do you use this priority mainly this priority is used when you have more than two threads and where you want the first thread to run over the second or vice versa the, uh, there is where you use the priority concept so let us see the another example let us first make this as comments and now we say that we are trying to use more than one thread okay in this example we will be using more than one thread but how can you define a more than one thread and what are the options or the ways of defining more than one thread so we have explained here that first you need to create a class you have written thread one which extends the thread class and in that you have a run method which prints this is thread one 
Similarly, again you have created another class called thread2 which extends the thread class and have written a run method. Now both of these classes will be instantiated in another class which we have mentioned as main thread and in its main method we have instantiated both the classes that is thread1 and thread2. Right? So if you see here you have created as thread1 t1 equal to new thread1 and thread2 t2 equal to new thread2. That is you have instantiated both the classes and then first you start your thread1 and then you start your thread2. Let us execute this program and now as you can see in the console it says that this is thread1 and this is thread2. There are certain other ways how you can define this. So let us convert this class into comments and now the next way of defining is you create a class under the main method you create separate threads and how do you create by instantiating you write thread class t1 equal to new thread you have a thread class of that thread class you have created an object and in the ren method you provide whatever details you would want to. Similarly because thread class is available again we create a thread2 of this thread class and then end with a semicolon and then run both of these threads and how do you run by calling the start method on each of the threads. So let us execute this program. And it again says thread 2 and thread 1. Because both of these threads when you are running together without setting any of the minimum or the maximum priority. It means the default priority is set for T1 and T2 which is 5. Therefore it will pick any thread and will run until unless you set a particular priority for each of this thread. So now let us see if you would want a particular program to sleep for a certain period of time. That is you have two threads and where you want one thread to sleep for a certain period of time. How do you do that? So we have created a class extends the thread class. Remember again in order to use the concept of thread you need to extend the thread class or implement the runnable interface. So now in the main method we have created two threads by instantiating the class thread1 and thread2 and we say that thread1.start and thread2.start but what is the run method? In the run method we have created a for loop where i is equal to 0, i less than equal to 5 and i++. plus plus. So please iterate the loop for 5 times and in that we have written a try catch block. In the try block we say that please make the sleep method of the thread class for a particular period of time. When you say 1000, a sleep method parameters always includes in milliseconds. So 1000 millisecond is nothing but your one second. So you say that please make my thread sleep for one second. So whenever you run your program, whenever it starts picking up the program, if it is picking up thread 1 then it will make the thread 1 sleep for a certain period of time and then it will print the second thread. So let us see what would be the value how will it be printed ideally it should be printed as 1 2 3 4 5 and again 1 2 3 4 5 because you are running your thread twice that is you are running your first thread once over this loop and then you are running the second thread over this loop. But in this loop one important thing which has been added is that you are making your thread sleep for one second after every iteration. So let us run this program. And as you see it is stopping for a second and then printing the value. Why is it printing 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4 together is because the priority of both the thread is default that is both the thread has the same priority of 5. We have not set any minimum or maximum priority for each of this thread. That is what it says at the time only one thread executes. That is you execute this thread and then the next thread execute. No not more than one thread can execute at the same time and if you sleep thread for a period of time then the other thread is picked by the scheduler that is what has happened here when 
you have first executed thread 1 and then because the thread 1 was going for sleep that is for one second then the thread 2 was picked and by then you printed the value of thread 2 the thread 1 was again awake and then next the value of thread 1 was printed. So let us convert this into comments and then run our next program. So I write I make them as a multi line comment. And now my intention is to use the join method. What does this join method do? Join method says that please allow a particular thread to run for a period of time. Then please continue with the next thread. So that is what all join is about. Right. So join it will first let the current thread run its task. On completion it lets the other thread continue. And in the method right you write join and in the bracket, if you provide the milliseconds, it means that the current thread will run for a specified number of seconds and then let the other thread execute, right? It is similar to the previous program where you are making your program sleep for a certain period of time. So, let us see what happens in this case. We have created three threads and we want to start all the three threads. But we say that first start my thread 1. Okay, first start my thread 1 and in its try block we write that thread 1 dot join 3000 milliseconds. If you write thread 1 dot join milliseconds that if you are calling the join method of a thread class over thread 1, it means it says that please run the thread 1 for first 3000 milliseconds and then give a pause to this thread 1 and start execution of the thread 2 and thread 3 and then thread 1 will continue right again repeating what it does is that if you are calling a join method over a particular thread then it allows that particular thread to run for a particular seconds if you are saying 3000 millisecond it means it will allow thread 1 to first run for 3 seconds and then it will start thread 2 and thread 3. So, the for loop is similar where you are trying to make thread sleep for 1000 1000 milliseconds that is equal to your 1 second. So, let us execute this program and now as you can see it is displaying the value by making sleep for 1 1 second. Let me just reduce this for our early execution and now execute this. As you can see, it has printed all the value. Why did I provide here as 1000 second is that because you are saying I am giving a priority to my thread 1 to execute for first 3 seconds. That is if my thread is sleeping after every second, therefore it will allow thread 1 to print only first 3 value that is 0, 1 and 2 and once two completes it will pick the thread 2 and thread 3 and then start execution. So, let us execute now as you can see 0, 1, 2 and now it will start picking the numbers in random that is it will start picking up thread 2, 3 and 1. So, this is how you first use a thread class by implementing the runnable interface or by extending the thread class and then start a thread by calling a run method and then if you want you can also stop the thread explicitly and we have seen the certain scenarios where you can make your thread sleep for a particular period of time and to call the certain methods over the thread if you want to set name get name get the priority minimum pro priority maximum priority you can set all that and how do you call first thread over the other by using a join method.